Right, in this video, I'm going to be discussing what's the difference between a modern start-stop battery like EFB type of batteries, enhanced flooded batteries, and conventional batteries. So they, some of the things are similar, uh, like they've got lead inside, but other things are not similar. Okay, so it's important if you're a car owner of a car with a start-stop to realise that there are differences. So this battery here is only two months old and I thought it had failed on me in my forward focus. However, subsequently, I think it's probably not, if you notice the brand, there's the brand there, uh, there's the brand there. I don't think this battery is made 100% for spec for the Ford Focus. For the Ford Focus it's 700 amps and 75 amp hours. This is 730, so they gave me the wrong one. Uh, however, I don't think this battery is made perfectly to spec uh, to the Ford standard. That's my opinion, okay? I'm entitled to my opinion. now. This battery I charged up fully about two weeks ago. So I'm gonna use ordinary voltmeter, and this is gonna be counterintuitive. You'll see in a minute why I say that. Uh, so hopefully you can see that. So I'm going to be testing red and black properly. So I'm getting, I think you can see that, 12.91 volts. So it's highly charged at the moment. This is the top end of a uh, battery. This is what, this, at 12.91 volts, this is what you would expect from a good battery, an ordinary lead acid battery for a car. Uh, however, I do have my suspicions now, and based on scientific kind of observations, and I'm, I'm entitled, and everyone is entitled to change their opinion uh, based on new data. So, Bear with me, 11.91 uh, is, it's kept its charge very, very well, no doubt. However, there's a part of me that's thinking the evidence shows that it shouldn't really be keeping its charge in, in a kind of peculiar way. It should be kind of almost absorbing the charge back into the, uh, the, 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 the there's carbon deposits and they're meant to be absorbing the, the charge deep into itself. Which is counterintuitive, you would have thought a high voltage battery must be the better one it, over a period of time that you've left it uncharged. Uh, however, the evidence kind of points the other way now. Uh, so this battery, notice it held its charge good. Anyone would say it's a good, a good charge at 11.91 after a period of non-charging for two weeks. Uh, one way you can obviously tell the battery is look in there, if you see in daylight, or ordinary light, the green light that tells you it's good, it tells you there, okay, recharge, replace, all right. Um, so it will actually indicate, so this battery, all on purposes, is good. However, uh, what is the difference between a, an ordinary uh, one of these EFB batteries? Likewise, an AGM battery, which are more advanced for vehicles regenerative braking, so I'm not going to talk about them today. What is the difference? Now, I found a website, Exide uh, Battery Technology. Now, I'm just going to, it will be difficult for you to read. It's an Exide Light Vehicle Leaflet. Benefits is high dynamic charge acceptance over life of battery. Extra energy for vehicles with and without start stop. Optimized regenerative braking functionality in vehicles with start stop system. Ensures maximum fuel saving. High level safety features. Uh, optimized. Operation engine compartment, latest generation approved by car manager, car park coverage for a limited number of SKUs. Can't remember what that is, long shelf life. So it's, it's spill proof security lid. So that's, that's one of the technologies in it. With uh, flame arrestor, plate group with medium compression. So these are pressed together in medium compression. I think the AGM batteries, more advanced ones, have high compression, negative plate, 3DX grid with carbon boost. That's critical. I think the carbon boost 2.0 is critical how these batteries operate. Positive plate, 3DX 
an advanced glass mat retainer covering active mesh. Right, so carbon boost, it tells you basically unique way of uh, absorbing uh, uh, and getting, uh, preventing sulfur deposits. Because in conventional batteries, you get sulfur deposits and your battery becomes less efficient. It cannot give out, it cannot give out the, um, the energy as ready because it's basically contaminated sulfur and the carbon I think reduces the sulfur so ideally in a proper EFB battery it's very easy for the energy to be released okay due to lack of sulfur deposit and it's also very easy for it to be charged due to lack of the sulfur deposits that's the main advantage I can consider uh, I could figure out right uh, okay and um, so how does that relate to uh, uh, your your car, right? So, if you've got an ordinary car uh, with a normal lead acid battery, so I'll show you on my Honda. What we mean? It's raining, so I've got to be quick though and get my car wet. So for ordinary car, so this is the Honda, Honda Civic, normal acid battery. Battle Fitness battery is made by the same firm as the one we just saw uh, here and here. So, so I haven't I haven't run this car the whole day. Uh, it is at 12.5 volts, 12.6 volts. So that's a good charge in a battery having not run for a day. However, I have run my Ford for 30 miles about two hours earlier. And guess what? It's probably going to be at lower voltage. Hopefully you can see that 12 point, oh, it's actually same at 12.6 volts. I noticed that when I leave this car overnight, it can drop and drop and drop to almost 12 volts. I found it at 12 volts uh, yesterday, having not run it for the night and left overnight. And I thought, what's going on? Is it gonna start? Yes, it did start, it still started. So the, so the main thing is, the car can still start even on 12 volts. Now on the Honda, if that was at 12 volts, I promise you the car will not start. It will start now, it's at 12.6 volts. It starts normally, lead acid batteries and car, it'll start, not stop it at 12.3 volts. So if you are an owner of, the conclusion is if you are an owner uh, of a start-stop car like I have Ford Focus, uh, if, Testing a voltage is not really going to be uh, your your uh, key to West figuring out if the battery is good or not. If that's one of the things that's not starting your car, looking at this is probably key. Taking it to a shop that does battery and alternate test is a key, so they can test it. Uh, what probably it means is because these have a longer sh life in the car, probably around about six years. Most likely, if you've got a start-stop problem. Uh, or if your battery basically does not start your car in the morning, you're probably looking at a starter motor. So your starter motor is probably the thing that is faulty, not the battery. And uh, speaking of which, if you do install these batteries, you need to find out how to uh, get the computer to relearn the new battery that has been installed. Yeah, on the full focus is five with the lights on. Uh, engine not running or you can have it running if you're five, five flashes of the main beam that's you know, the main beam that brightens blinds everyone that main beam then three steps on the brake pedal do that within about 10 seconds or so and you'll see the battery indicator flash so keep the engine off actually but keep keep the electricity on and do that with the lights on find out in your own car on the honda civic mark 9 i think it's Turn the engine off, turn it, turn, turn the power on, turn it off, turn it on five times. So try and find out for your own car. Anyway, thanks for watching. I've tried to do this in one take, but I hope that helps. So these new batteries, you can't really just rely on testing the voltage and thinking, right, I need a new battery. Because as I proved, I've got a new starter motor, new alternator, a new Ford battery in the Ford and it was only at 12 volts after overnight standstill. Interesting, interesting, very different from before.